Hey all, welcome to today's Rever webinar. I'm Rice Schuler, a Rev staff member and a community program manager. Uh, if you're on the forums, you probably see me there as Rye Rev. Uh, it has a dash in the middle of it. Uh, to give a quick overview of today's web uh, how today's webinar is going to go, we have a couple of our veteran Revers. Uh, they put together a great presentation for everybody. For those who are watching live on Zoom, a uh, Zoom might be new for some of you. So just so it's clear for everybody, if you're watching live on Zoom, we can't see or hear you. Your camera is not on, uh, but there are a couple chat boxes below. One to chat with uh, either the panelist or everyone who's here in the uh, webinar, and another is a question and answer box. Uh, we will not be getting to question and answers in the middle of the presentation. So please don't be surprised if we don't answer your questions until uh, the ladies here are done speaking. Uh, but we will get to your questions in the second half of this presentation. So feel free to ask them uh, if something pops up in the presentation that you'd like them to clarify later, uh, or if you just have other thoughts generally here. Uh, and then also as a quick note, since uh, many of you had reached out before the webinar about taking a spot from another rever, uh, we'll let you know how capacity is as uh, the presentation goes on. Uh, the web this current webinar fits 500 revers live watching. Uh, so as spots open up, uh, I'll let some people know, uh, or if we never hit 500, it's not a deal and we'll just keep partying on. But in any case, uh, there will be a video replay available after the webinar today. Uh, we will make that link available to everyone who uh, either wants to watch this again or uh, for people who weren't able to attend live. But in any case, uh, enough of me speaking. Uh, ladies, did you want to introduce yourselves and uh, get the presentation started up? Okay. Um, one second. I have to go to screen share first. There we go. Can you see that? Yep. Looks good. Yes. Super. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. I'm actually impressed that we have, that we're full. I didn't expect that to happen. Our topic for today is how to pick the file that's right for you. And we're gonna focus uh, this presentation on, for basically the newer revers, and also um, uh, focus a little bit for uh, rookies on how to protect their metrics. Hmm. Okay, so. Uh, first of all, I think we should introduce ourselves. We are your Revenar presenters. One of our rev, uh, Revers coined that and we thought it was really cool. So uh, we're gonna be calling these Revenars. So first, um, my name is Trixie. I've been with Rev since uh, 2016. Um, I do both TC and more recently CP and I'm a grader and a reviewer and QC in, in both of those. And Melanie. Good morning, everybody. I'm <laughs> Melanie. Uh, on the forums, you might know me as Emily. Uh, next Monday will be my, be my three-year anniversary with Rev. I started in transcription, did that a few weeks. Then I found captioning and fell in love with that, and that's been my home ever since. I've been a CP grader for a little over two years now, and I'm in CP+. Plus. Uh, Rye, how's our um, cap capacity looking? I'm muted here. Uh, we're about yeah. at half right now, but I think some people are okay. still trickling in uh, because we're about three minutes in and Zoom is new for some people. Okay, all right. Well, Trixie, get us started. Okay, so again, as I said, today is uh, our topic is file selection. And file selection is the key to your success in many, in many cases. It's important because, first of all, you wanna like what you're doing, right? You pick a file that you hate, you're bored, you fall asleep, you're not gonna do as well. So. From a, a topic point of view, file selection is very important. It's also important because you want to keep the customer happy. And again, if you've fallen asleep or you were bored stiff and you didn't pay attention, you're not going to do your best work and then the customer is not going to be happy. And without the customers, we don't have a job. And finally, it's to protect your metrics. Without good metrics, you still don't have a job. So file selection is important for all of those reasons. Now, Melanie's going to give you first a couple of pro tips on using tools to help you successfully select your files. Thanks, Trixie. Uh, if you'll bring up our next slide. What we're going to talk about very briefly, just a little bit, is filters. This is available in transcription, TC, and in captioning, CP. And at the top of your Find Work page, you'll see more filters. Click on that and you will get this screen here. You'll see some red sliders on the left. Those can be moved back and forth to change minutes, paper minute, and all of that. You see all of these check boxes for topics, 
things like favorites and ignored. In transcription, you can check and uncheck things like verbatim if you don't want to do those. You set your filters so that you can find files that are in your sweet spot. And then when you have set your filters the way you want, you click that little black box with a little floppy disk on it and you give it a name and you save it. And then you have that filter permanently uh, in, on your find work page. And you can delete it later if you find that it's not working for you. You can have multiple filters. So you can have one for five minute files and one for 40 minute files, anything, any combination that you want. Down at the bottom of the page, you'll see things like customer name, link, paper minute, and all of that. Those column headers are clickable. And when you click them, they reorder the file from ascending to descending and descending to ascending. So just click it. So if you want to look at all of the short files today, click the link file and make sure that the shortest ones are at the top. Or if you just want to look for long files that are gonna last you for a couple of days, click it twice, get the long files to the top and look through those. So you sit down with your own find work page, play around with them, have fun and set your own filters. And that helps you zero in on things more easily instead of they're sitting there clicking one by one by one, trying and trying to find something that might be interesting to you. So that's pretty much it. There's, it's available on both sides, save as many as you want and have fun with it. Uh, Trixie, take us to the next point. Okay, so um, we did show you examples of both the TC and the CP ones. Uh, this is the CP one that we're on now. Mm -hmm. All right, so back to file selection. Let's talk about basically what kind of files are available. Well, there's type of files and quality of files, and we're going to go through them in a little bit more detail as we go along. So first of all, let's talk about the platform. There's essentially two platforms um, in, in transcription that you can use. The first one is Line, and a lot of the new rookies are being uh, trained on Line to begin with, which is uh, basically more of an editing job than it is um, typing from scratch. The second is the classic editor. And here, you, you basically start with a clean slate and you type everything that you hear. And then there's a type of file called Rush. And that's basically if you're a very fast typist or good editor, and uh, you can make more money doing that, but you have to be careful because the deadlines are much, much shorter. In line, you also have the ability to import your draft under the project. If you go to project and you click down, you'll see import draft. And you can actually edit in line and then import it back to the classic editor. And now it will save all of your edits. So if you feel like you're editing and then lines just not doing it that day, it's an Australian accent and they didn't do very well, you can always switch back to the editor and every, all the work that you have done so far will, will have been preserved. So that's a really neat feature. So, okay, so now which file do you choose? Well, there's lots of different choices. First of all, there's verbatim. What that means is you type every single little thing you hear, the ums, the ahs. So if you're, if you're, uh, attention to detail is great and you love doing that, then that's probably the file for you. But you have to remember, you have to type everything. Then there's the default style, and this is what the majority of the files are. And this is where we lightly edit. We never change what a person says. We never, um, we never uh, say what we think, you know, type what we think they meant to say. We type what they say, but we can skip the ums and ahs and make it just a little bit more polished. And then there's some files that actually have a video attached to them. So sometimes people will use that video uh, to, in essence, help them with some audio cues. Sometimes a word, someone slurs over a word or they're speaking very fast and looking at the video might help you determine what they're actually saying. And all of that, again, you can, you can, you can go into your, um, uh, when you're looking at your filters, you can decide what files you want to sort by. All right, well then there's actually some more things to consider. So first of all, I think the biggest thing, there's two big things, quality and length, but the quality of the audio, some people have better headsets than others. Some people have better equipment than others. So what might be sound really terrible to you might be okay for another person. It's really okay if you can't understand what someone's saying, unclaim. 
There's an, especially if it's within the hour, it's better to do that. It's better for you. It's better for the customer. It's better for everyone than to try to, you know, uh, muddle your way through a file that you can't really understand what they're saying. The second thing has to do with length. I'm going to talk more about that later because especially in the rookie stage, taking a shorter file is probably better for you than taking a longer one. There's a lot of reasons why we're not going to go through that right now. And I've shown you here at the bottom, uh, length and, uh, and quality, you can see the Rev has given ratings to those um, in, in, on your find work page, you will see that. Okay, number of speakers. Now that, in, that, that talks about a few things. It talks about there's probably gonna be some crosstalk if there's a few more speakers. You have to keep track of the speakers. You have to, if they have names inferred or provided, you're going to have to use them. And you have to understand what they're saying. People use context. When someone says something and you're not really sure what they say, try to understand what the topic is. Think about what the topic was, what they meant to say, and sometimes that will come to you. But in any event, if you're not really an expert, probably limiting your length, going for good quality, limiting your length, and, and limiting the number of speakers will help you uh, do much better. Finally, there are files with special instructions. Dictation have special instructions. Translators have special instructions. And some clients, there are a few clients that have specific instructions. We're not gonna name the clients here, but you have to be careful to read the special instructions. Those are the ones in the little yellow box, not in the glossary. The ones in the little yellow box are the, are the uh, REV approved special instructions. Okay, so now we have more options. There are redos. Someone's done a file, they didn't really do the best job. Maybe they couldn't hear it. Maybe they were in a rush, who knows why, but uh, it has gone uh, for review. The reviewer decided it needed to be redone. It's back in the queue and now it's your turn. Do a better job. Don't just claim it and submit it. That's not what a redo is about. You have to make it perfect. Some files seem like I have a lot of, un a lot of unclaims. That's okay, sometimes people claim a file and then for whatever reason, um, the dog threw up, I don't know. <laughs> uh, they decided that it was not a topic they wanted to do. There's a lot of reasons people unclaim that really have nothing to do with the quality of the file. So don't let that deter you. If there's a lot of unclaims, still give it a go. When you arrive at, at uh, Plus, Rever Plus, you have some perks. There's best efforts, which means you actually get the very, very tough files and you don't get uh, graded. So these are for, uh, for Rever Plus only. And also there's yellow diamonds, which means you get, you get a bump in pay, which is actually very nice. So there is a huge incentive for everyone to try to get to Plus when they can. Okay, so what happens after you claim a file? Well, first of all, <laughs> there's something called sniping. We all do it. There's nothing wrong with it especially if the queue is pretty empty, it, it is okay to claim file, preview it as quickly as you can. Don't use the whole hour, as quickly as you can. And if it's not for you, unclaim it. That's okay. But if you keep it, you have an hour to actually review it. Do that thoroughly before you proceed. Otherwise you're gonna find yourself in, uh, in possibly in some hot water. So hopefully you've submitted it on time. You loved it, you can favor it favored it at that point. If something happens within that one hour unclaim window, okay, you still have the ability to unclaim late. It's not the best situation, but it's still better than some other alternatives. You'll get a commitment ratio hit, which we can talk about in another uh, seminar, uh, but it's still better to do that than to try to muddle through it. You can submit it late. You have an ability to ask for more time. You'll get a hit on your on-time submission, but it's still better than uh, submitting a file of sloppy work. Do not do that. <laughs> You'll get a metrics hit and you're going to have a mad customer, both of which Rev doesn't want and you don't want. And finally, never ever submit an incomplete file. That is the biggest no-no. First of all, you're going to lose your pay and your account can be closed. Nobody wants that to happen. So do not ever submit an, un, uh, an incomplete file. Unclaim it, even if it's late. It's better for everybody. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it over to Melanie and she's going to talk to you a little bit more about the specifics of captioning, which I think 
a lot of you are going to be very interested in because captioning is fun, but also tricky. Yes, it is. A lot of what Trixie said about things to do with transcription files also apply to captioning files. And some of what I'm about to say is going to apply to transcription as well. For instance, length. That's your biggest thing, especially as a rookie. Stick to those shorter files. Use those filters that we showed you. Set a filter for five minutes and less and stick to that filter. Because remember, as a rookie, you only get a certain number of minutes in order to graduate. And if you don't graduate by then, you don't get another chance. That's it. In transcription, you get 100 minutes. In captioning, you get up to 150. You also want to have as many individual files as you possibly can so that each individual grade doesn't have as big of an impact on your metrics. If you've only got four file, four jobs on your record, then one grade is a big percentage of that. If you've got 15 files, one grade is not as big of a percentage of that. So use those filters, set them to shorter files when you're a rookie. As you get your feet under, you learn things, you'll learn what your sweet spot is. Some people like short files, some people like really long files so that they have longer deadlines, so that they can do things like eat and sleep and walk the dog and all of that kind of stuff. Learn what's good for you as you grow in your abilities. So after you have picked, a file of a link that's good for you. What are you going to look for during that hour that Trixie just talked about? Actually, it's 15 minutes for rush files and 50 to 60 minutes for every other file is your unclaimed window. So when you're previewing, here are the things that you want to look for. Accents and foreign language. If you are struggling to understand a primary speaker and what they're saying because they have an accent that you're not familiar with, you need to unclaim that file and let someone who is familiar with it handle that. I'm good at American accents, most British accents, and some light Australian accents. I am absolute rubbish with Asian accents or strong UK and Australian accents. I'm just rubbish with those, so I don't take those files. I want to do a good job. Also foreign language, if there's a lot of foreign language being layered in because one person doesn't speak English, you need to know, especially in captioning, how do you handle that? When is it okay to type a word that's not English or when do you need to use an atmospheric instead? You also need to know how to handle interpreters and things like that. So watch out for those sorts of things, look for them while you're previewing and figure out if that's going to be a big issue for you or not. Another thing to look at during your preview time is research. Some files may be all about heart medicine or some new drug with a name that's six syllables long, or it may be about computers and programming and have all of these programming terms that you've never heard of. If you're willing to do the research, that's good but you still need to be careful. If you're not willing to do the research, you need to unclaim that file. Now, if you are familiar with it, it can be a great option for you because you're gonna get through it, you know it, you know you're going to do well on it, it's interesting to you, and you're gonna just fly through it and, and you're going to enjoy it. But make sure during that preview time what kind of terminology is going to be in that file and don't assume that it's going to be easy to research. All right, in captioning, something that we have that transcriptionists don't have is something called carrots. Carroting is when you flip the top of the text at the bottom of the screen up to the top of the screen so that hopefully it's out of the way and everything on the screen and the caption itself can be read. But we have a ton of rules about carrots. When do you care? When do you not care it? And it, it, they are very, very tricky and hard to get a handle on sometimes because there are just so many rules. If you're new, don't try and take a file that has a lot of text coming in and coming out and rolling up and down. And sometimes there's text in the top and bottom and sometimes there's not and it's just all over the place. Leave that be, let someone more experienced handle it. Go at it slowly and build your skills. Something that we get a little more often in captioning than we do in transcription is scripted files 
versus unscripted files. Now, scripted doesn't necessarily mean that it comes with a script with it. It usually does not. Scripted just means that when it was filmed, the speakers were reading from a script. It could be a television show or a movie, or it could simply be a intercompany educational video that they're going to be showing to employees. Like when you first start your job, it shows you this, uh, this video and you know everybody's talking from a script. These can be good because everybody's talking calmly usually. They're talking in a nice even cadence and they're usually clear audio. So they can be very easy. But again, watch out for terminology if it's for some medical thing or computer thing that might have a lot of terminology. So preview and look for that. But if there's not a lot of that, they can be really great files. But most of what we get is unscripted work. And this can be all kinds of things. For those, preview carefully and watch for things like crosstalk because in captioning, we handle it a lot differently than transcription does. Uh, you can't just put a crosstalk tag on it and be done with it. There are different ways to handle it. So look for people who are talking over each other. Sometimes they're easy to understand, sometimes they're not. I don't do well with crosstalk. If I hear that in when I'm previewing, I'm usually going to let that file go. Something else that we have in captioning that they don't have in transcription is atmospherics. And those are all the sounds that you hear in a video that are important for the non-hearing viewer to know about. Remember, captioning is for people who don't hear well or don't hear at all. And they deserve to have as close to the same experience as a hearing viewer. So we want to tell people that a dog is barking or a train is honking or any number of things like that, the door is squeaking. We want to be able to include that. But Rev has very specific instructions about how to do atmospherics. And you need to read through the style guide and the help center article that's linked in the style guide. There's also a great uh, video on the Rever HQ YouTube channel that explains atmospherics. But until you get a really good handle on those and you don't are not getting comments on those anymore in your grading comments, you don't want a file that has a ton of them. But if you're creative and you've got a handle on the right format for them, you may enjoy things like television shows and movie uh, and movies. One other thing I want to say for things like vloggers and game video games and things like that, these people who put their video game playthroughs on YouTube. It doesn't matter if you're familiar with the show or the game, if you've played it for years or whatever, that's gonna help you with accuracy. It's not going to help you with formatting and your atmospherics. So be wary of those. Just like Trixie talked about with transcription, if something has a lot of speakers, you, you've got to be careful, you've got to be able to keep them straight and make sure that you're, you're putting your dashes, your speaker dashes, and if you need to use speaker IDs, then uh, make sure that you're assigning them to the right speakers. And you do have to use speaker IDs if you don't see the person on screen during their turn of speaking. So if you've got a lot of speakers, you've got a lot of dash and ID things going on, and you may have crosstalk. So check for lots of speakers when you're previewing. And let's see, a couple other quick things audio only files in captioning. These are ones that either have nothing on the screen at all or they have a static screen. Those can be easier, but sometimes they can be a little bit harder. We don't use speaker IDs for those, so sometimes those can be easier. But if you have too many speakers, they can be hard to keep straight. So be wary of those and, and make sure you preview carefully. And just like Trixie men mentioned with lots of unclaims, don't let that throw you, don't let it scare you, decide for yourself. We also get redo files in captioning and look through them, open the project details page, see what kind of comments were made by the grader and see if it's gonna be an easy redo or if you need to just scrap the whole thing and start over yourself. But if there's only a few errors, these can be great files. Just don't depend on what was done before. And when you get to plus, 
You also get a redo filter that helps you find them more easily. And don't let pay, don't let those dollar signs get in your eyes. Don't pay attention to that when you're a rookie. You concentrate on getting good at what you do. As one infamous uh, forum member said, first you get good, then you get fast, then you get paid. We also have rush and captioning. Trixie talked about those. You only get a 15 minute preview for those. Now we have draft captions now in captioning that's similar to line in transcription. You just go in and you edit, you make sure that your speaker dashes are correct. You make sure your breaking is correct and all of that. You may not like that. You may just say, I'm better at typing than I am at editing. Scrap it all. I'm just going to type it from scratch. And then Rush, like we talked about, they have a shorter deadline, shorter preview, but they do pay more. So once you get good at what you're doing, you might want to make those something that you look at frequently. I think Trixie has one more slide for us to kind of put these together quickly. So when you pick up a file, you're not just looking at one thing. You're looking at multiple things. For instance, movies and cartoons and games, they kind of all tie together. They can be great for a creative type who's good with atmospherics and you've got your feet under you and you know what you're doing, but you've got to look at, there are atmospherics all over the place. Do I know how to do them? Sometimes they're scripted. Do I know who the characters are? Am I willing to put in the research to figure out who said this instead of slapping a generic role descriptor speaker ID on someone? And do they have carrots? Do I know when I need to carrot in a video game and when I don't? Do I know when to carrot in a TV show or a cartoon? Cartoons can be very tricky because sometimes there's text on the screen, but the whole thing was made all at the same time. So do I know how, when to carrot for that? So think of all of these things for these types of files. Lectures, if you know the topic, you may be really good at it and you're going to enjoy it and you might not have to do a lot of research and you'll just fly through it and you'll love it. And some people like to focus on one particular type and that's great. But if you're not familiar with everything yet, make sure you look into it good during that preview. Am I going to have to do a ton of research? Am I going to have to figure out how to spell 6 million acronyms? Am I going to get this right? So make sure you look for that sort of stuff. And interviews, they can be interesting. You might have two or three people. Hopefully you've got people who take turns and speak nicely and they speak calmly, but sometimes they don't. I know transcriptionists complain all the time about interviewers who are constantly interrupting the person that they interview and it drives them up the wall. Well, you've got to learn how to deal with that if you caption it too. You've got to learn how to figure out interruptions and crosstalk and talking over each other and you might have terminology in that as well and proper nouns. So those are just kind of some examples of things that, you know, there's not going to be just one issue in each file. You've got to look at multiple different things so that you know, okay, I'm good at this and I'm good at this and I'm good at this. Okay, this is a good file for me. All right, and that kind of winds it up for me for captioning and Trixie's gonna finish this up and then we will take some questions. Trixie, you're on, I'm hearing Trixie. Yeah, Trixie, you're muted. Okay, right sorry. <laughs> okay, um, thank you, Melanie, that was phenomenal. Okay, so what's the bottom line to this presentation? Well, choosing a file is a balancing act and you want to climb the river ladder. You want to start out as a rookie. Don't worry about money. You're earning to, to learn. I mean, Rev is one of the few companies that actually pays you to learn how to do a job. It's, that, that's a great opportunity. So I wouldn't worry about making money when you're a rookie. Just worry about becoming a better transcriber or captioner. When you're a rever, you can start to think about money, but you still have to balance that with making sure you're maintaining your, your uh, metrics and that you're maintaining your client's happiness. The whole point is to get to plus. When you get to plus, you get lots of perks. And then if you choose, and not everybody does, you can become a grader at some point in time. 
But the whole idea is do not sacrifice your metrics for pay. If you have good metrics, the pay will come. This is an awesome job, guys. And it provides an opportunity to a lot of people that would, they would never otherwise get. Who can work from home in their pajamas and you know, make a decent living and learn and get paid to learn how to do a job? It's just a great, great job if you do it right. So thank you, Rev, for the opportunity to uh, make this presentation. Thank you, everybody, for coming to join us. And we hope you liked it. And now we're going to go to questions. Yeah, I'm going to quickly address some things in chat real quick, and then I'll jump into questions. Uh, so you have a lot of people in here that are, uh, thank you guys for the presentation. Uh, I think it's Bester here uh, in Dimsey saying, like, really appreciates, like, having things like this makes them feel more like part of Rev, part of the Rev family. Um, let me see what they have up here. Sorry, I'm scrolling up a little bit. There's a lot of chat. Um, Michelle says, this is all very helpful. Thank you for doing this today. Uh, Pat calls out the get good, get fast, get paid is great <laughs> advice and really appreciates you phrasing things like that. Uh, and yeah, lots of uh, hellos at the beginning. I apologize, I didn't catch everybody at the beginning. And then uh, Danielle, hopefully the, the question about atmospherics, uh, hopefully that answered that, but in uh, the Q&A panel, I shared a link to the Help Center article uh, that helps a little bit more. Uh, it looks like someone accepted the question here from Jim about uh, can't do this full time is part time acceptable. Uh, I think that's a pretty easy one. Like, yes, you can do Rev as, uh, as often as you'd like to. But ladies, you have a, more of an opinion on part time versus full time at Rev? Well, the only thing I would say is that it, it, it's a, it is a question of metrics that you have to maintain. Uh, it's different in both CP and, and, uh, and TC, but you have to maintain a certain number of minutes if you want to stay in plus. But other than that, there are no, no requirements. The only thing to watch for, though, is if you have had any late unclaims or any late submissions in the last 120 days, make sure that you offset those with some new completed jobs so that if you do have a period of inactivity that all of a sudden you won't have just a couple of completed jobs and then you've got these late files and those could send you into warning. But on a general day-to-day -day basis, yeah, you can work as little or as much as you want. I think we'll probably do, if people are enjoying these, we'll probably do one on metrics where we'll get really in-depth on, on all of the metrics and how that, uh, what that really means and how it affects you. Yeah. Yeah, and to follow up what Trixie said or what Asus was asking in chat, like, will we have more okay. webinars? Uh, yeah, as long as Rivers are finding these helpful, uh, I, I don't see why we wouldn't be doing more of these in the future. Uh, so I'll grab some of these questions out of here. Uh, so Chris at the beginning of the webinar asked about, uh, we'll set that right there, uh, answering live. Um, so Trixie Melanie, how do you effectively decide if there's too much research involved in the file for what that file is paying? I'll go first. So, okay, on the transcription side, first of all, if it's medical, you know there's going to be, if you don't have an understanding of medical terminology, skip it because there's going to be research. Even thing, little things like when do you capitalize a drug? A generic is different than, um, you know, than one that's, uh, 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 what do you call it? I'm not a medical expert, so <laughs> I forgot what you call a non-generic. Um, but anyway, so if you're not familiar with the subject, that's too much research for you. Now there are some, let's say you, you like the historical files. I love those old historical files you know, where older people talk about what it was like um, in the 40s or 30s and Steamboat Springs. You're going to have some research there, names of towns, uh, roads. You might even have to look up the names of some, his, you know, people that were prominent in the community at the time. That's, I would call that a moderate amount of research. And if you're interested in the topic and you think that's a fun file to do, then do it. But just remember, keep your research tab open. If it's Google or whatever you use, Bing, whatever you use, and make sure to do the research. If you're not willing to do the research, don't take the job. One research is too much research if you're not willing to do it. And it's basically the same in captioning. In captioning, a lot of times we will have videos most of the time. We have videos that go with it. They can help you a lot. So you might not have to do quite as much research on some files but you still have to remember to pay attention to what's on the screen. But sometimes it's not on the screen. It's just two people talking about something. There's nothing on the screen to help you out. And if one thing is too much for you to look at, to look up, yeah, 
unclaim it. And remember, you've got 50 to 60 minutes for everything that's not rush. Uh, next question over here, and uh, I'll share a text here as well. Pauline was asking uh, about getting a test project to work on a file in something like Line uh, where you're not working on a live client file. So to, I'll start there, that at the top of find work, if you go to resources and explore Line, uh, there actually is a sandbox for the Line editor where you can work on a project that doesn't go to a customer. Uh, but ladies, do you guys have other advice for someone that wants to get better at Line uh, but doesn't want to have something go out to a customer. That's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I know you can upload um, audio into the, the classic editor if you want to practice in there on a different file other than the one they provide you. I'm not, I don't know that you can do that in line or not. I've never tried that. Um, maybe you know, Rai, but um, I, I think that it's a really useful tool to go to that, to your um, help area and pull down the explore line, explore editor, and practice in there. Even if you have to do the same file over and over again, you will find it really helps you just to get familiar with the hotkeys and how the, how the program itself or how the platform itself works. Uh, tangential, since it's happening in the chat right now, uh, some people are talking about going to the forums, getting help. Uh, since people are talking about Lyndon Ear in chat, can you ladies talk a little bit about uh, why Lyndon Ear is helpful on the forums for people that are maybe doing files for the first time? Sure. So in TC, in transcription, uh, first of all, I think we're going to have a webinar on this topic, so we're not going to get too in-depth on this. But in TC, Lendineer, and also in CP, Lendineer is really important because, first of all, some people have better audio equipment. Some people just have better hearing. Some people have a better understanding of accents. If you've taken a file, and this happens sometimes, and you're going along great, and all of a sudden a third person shows up, and they've got this strong, like, uh, Irish accent that you can't understand because you thought you had two Americans talking and you're good with American accents. Well, go to Lendineer because I, I'm really good with accents. I can figure out almost any accent. There's a few I can't, but for the most part, I'll, you know, someone like me would come there and help you, and what seems like gibberish to you is going to sound very clear to me. Sometimes there's audio quality issues that, uh, believe it or not, when you go into lend a ear, other people can hear things that you can't hear. So it's definitely, definitely worth your while. At the top of the lend an ear thread, there is instructions on exactly how to post your, your, your request. Please follow those instructions, both in CP and TC, because that helps us as helpers uh, know when, to, when you've resolved it, when you've submitted it. We're not going there an hour later and trying to help you and it's already over. So just follow those rules. It's a very valuable tool. Uh, we've got about 20 minutes left and a bunch of questions, so I'll get through as many as uh, we can pop up here. Uh, I'm going to pop up two different questions about redos. Uh, someone was asking if sometimes redos uh, start with a blank slate and why. And someone else is asking about like our redos projects that other revers have done or uh, j just in general, uh, can we chat a little bit more about redos, how that works? why you have different amounts of text that you're starting from when you do a redo? Sure, uh, yes, a redo is a file that a previous rever worked on and for some reason it was graded as, graded or in transcription, they have something called review. It was possibly reviewed and found to be not customer ready. So they send it back to the queue to be redone. In captioning, everything should be there except the syncing you are 100% responsible for the final content of the file that you submit. So make sure you go through it with a fine tooth comb. Do not depend on what the previous rever typed in. Don't depend on their carroting or their atmospherics or their breaking. If you're in transcription, don't depend on their tags um, being correct. You go through it and treat it as if you had started it from scratch. Uh, Let's see, Trixie, can you explain? Sometimes I know that things might be missing things. It's possible that maybe somebody else had claimed the file and had cleared the work. Uh, that and that might be why yeah. it's, it's- In transcription, there's a couple of it. things that you have to deal with. First of all, sometimes people, they just clear their work because they probably didn't think it was useful enough for the next person. So you find, you're picking up a redo, but there's nothing there. Sometimes they actually, it's a redo of a, a file that's gone to a client and you'll, you'll 
have to retrieve that work in a different way. I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it used to be very, um, it used to be consistent that it was always there and now sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. Um, so the, the value of a redo is questionable at this point, but there is a way to retrieve it. Um, I can't really show you cause I can't screen share without picking a client. Uh, you have to go to the project page and click on the previous transcript and then click on that and you should be able to retrieve it, but sometimes you can't. So I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer be because uh, there was a lot of things that uh, were available to us. And then uh, because uh, for security reasons, Rev had was forced actually to disable some of those functions. And with respect to redos, I think they inadvertently disabled it and they said they said they put it back, but it's not always there. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer. Uh, so I'll grab one here. So Luz was asking, and this is probably for you, Trixie, uh, if the slides will be available from your presentation somewhere else besides this presentation. So we will have the, the replay, the video replay for this one, you'll be able to do that. Uh, Trixie, if someone it was interested in your slides, could they get those from you or uh, sure. how could someone find those? Yeah, just DM me and I'll give you a, I'll give you a link to the uh, PowerPoint. And uh, she's just Trixie uh, on the forums. So you can probably find her if you see the, the forum post, it actually has links to both Trixie and uh, Melanie's form handle. So if you find the, the Rever webinar link on the forums, uh, you'll be able to find how to PM Trixie if you haven't done a private message before. Uh, Trixie, do you have knowledge about foot pedals? Is that something that we want to answer here or uh, how do you uh, feel about that? What's the question? Uh, the I'm... question is a how to use the foot pedal, how to oh. install a foot pedal uh, to use that. Yeah, it's probably too technical to get into here, but there is a, um, on the right-hand side of the classic editor, there is something that, that says uh, foot pedal. And I used to use a foot pedal. I don't anymore because I've just gotten so good with my, uh, my keyboard uh, shortcuts. But if you follow those instructions, it should work. I think it's too complicated to get into on this. For this and point. you can use them in captioning as well. It, it's also up in the, um, controls menu. Uh, sometimes I do know that foot pedals can be ornery and you have to reinstall them every day sometimes, but uh, they, they are available to use. There are a couple of uh, help center articles available that have some of the troubleshooting and information uh, that might be helpful to you. Uh, we have a question here from Melissa that uh, she's a rever. Uh, she would like to be plus, but uh, it's hard for her to tell how close she's getting to plus. Uh, do you guys have advice for people working towards plus to tell how close they are or uh, advice about just basically moving from rubber to plus? Well, it depends on what, why you're, what you're, why you're not in plus is if it's just a question of minutes, you should be able to see on your uh, project page, your, my projects page, how many minutes you have. And uh, you can metrics. look in, on your my metrics metric. page. Yes. My metrics page. Sorry. Um, how many minutes you have and uh, you need uh, 1200 minutes in, in captioning and 800 minutes in, in transcription to become plus, but that's not the only requirement. You also have to have minimum metrics. So you have to make sure that you meet all three requirements, the number of minutes, your in transcription, your accuracy and your uh, formatting have to be at least the min at the minimum or above. And the same thing in captioning, you'd have to have metrics that are 1200 minutes plus at the minimum or above in all three categories, which is accuracy, formatting, and uh, alignment. And also your commitment ratio and your on-time submission rate have to be at certain minimums as well on both sides. Uh, we had a couple questions about the gold diamond projects. I think this should be easy for you ladies. One is... Uh, <laughs> I'm in CP Rever Plus, I don't see the Gold Diamond projects. And the other one is at what point in the future will I see Gold Diamond projects if I'm not Rever Plus? Okay, so there is, it is only for TC right now. I, you'd have to ask uh, the powers that be whether or not it's intended for CP in the future. Um, what was the second part of the question? Uh, so it was two questions. One person was asking about caption. So uh, just, just again to be clear for people because some of the abbreviations are confusing. TC is an abbreviation we use for transcription. Uh, plus pay is currently available for people in the Rever Plus tier if they're in transcription. 
uh, for CP, which is captioning, uh, plus pay the, the diamond projects are not currently available to caption rivers. Uh, this is currently just the feature of transcription river plus. Uh, it's possible we offer this in the future for caption. Uh, that's not currently a feature that's available for uh, caption right. rivers. Uh, so the flip side of uh, the metrics question. So uh, Valerie's asking that uh, her metrics are currently in jeopardy. Uh, she's working to get them up, but is having a difficult time finding short files, small files. Uh, what advice do you have for someone like her? Okay, this is a this is a conundrum, and I'll tell you why. Because when you're not in plus, <laughs> you're in just rev rever, whether it's transcription or captioning, it's hard to find files. It's very hard to find short files. And what you need to do, depending upon what's wrong with your metrics, um, if it's an accuracy problem or a formatting problem, you need to take as many short files as you can to get graded more to get those metrics up. If it's a commitment ratio problem, you need to keep working and not unclaim any files after the one hour deadline. If it's a late submission problem, you need to do the same thing. Work as much as you can and do not submit anything late. It's, it's kind of like repairing your credit. Okay, you started out with perfect credit and then you took a couple of loans out and then you missed a couple of payments. It's not the end of the world, but you have to work at it to get it back to where it should be. Uh, Nancy seems like she has a follow up from one of our previous questions. So uh, she calls out she has enough minutes to be a rubber plus, but she does not have a uh, high enough metrics. Uh, she's curious if she will never be able to reach plus because of this. Melanie, you want to take that one? Sure. Oh, absolutely. You can get there. Uh, as Trixie was just talking about, just keep taking files and take shorter files if you can, because you, you get graded somewhere between about 10 to 20% of your files will be graded overall. It's completely random, chosen by computer. And so the more individual files you take, the better your chances are of some of those getting graded. If you only do one long file each day, then it may take you two weeks to get a single grade. But if you do 10 short files in a day, one of those might get graded. So just keep plugging at it. If it's your commitment ratio that's the problem, just add more completed files and your number will go up. If it's late files, same thing. Just keep adding more completed files and your percentage will go up. Uh, so basically, if you're a little bit below what you need for plus, just keep working at it and you'll get there and ask for help when you need it. All right, we have a little bit over 10 minutes right now. Uh, Rebecca uh, first says, thanks all for your time in putting this together. Uh, she's asking what tips you have for both typing and listening fatigue when you're working projects. Text expanders <laughs> for typing fatigue. I'm a text expander maven. I have thousands of them. They are so useful. Um, if you don't know what a text expander is, we need to talk. You can DM me and I'll tell you more about it because it's really, really a useful tool to get you to get your speed up. Also, it helps with accuracy, believe it or not, because if you have it, let's say you have a hard, aluminum, okay? And you can't remember how to spell aluminum. You just put A-L-M in your text expander and you never have to worry about spelling that wrong because if you get it in there right, it's always gonna be right. So text expanders are a hugely useful tool for both um, speed and, and for accuracy. Is, was that the whole question? I, sometimes these are compound questions. Uh, the the mm -hmm. first part I think was thanking you guys for your time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're welcome. And uh, thank you. Something that you can do is, uh, especially for longer files, is what a lot of people like to do is break it up into sections and type for, say, that was 10 audio question. minutes and then sync it and then go back to typing. Just make sure if you do that, you make yourself a nice big red caption group that, because that can't be submitted. So then you can't accidentally submit it too early because you're not finished. But that's a good way to, uh, for captioning at least, to help break up the monotony and uh, help reduce that fatigue. And sometimes you just have to put it down and just go wash the dish or go walk the dog or whatever and just take a break. Uh, so Seabear13 has a, a question here in the Q&A. Uh, she mentions that there's a filter for favorites. 
Can we talk about how to add customers so they're found in that filter? Melanie, you want to do that? Okay. Uh, there are two ways that you can, well, two ways in captioning, three ways in transcription. The main two ways on both sides is when you're on the find work page, if you see a customer name that, oh yeah, I did a file for them the other day and I really like them, or you've listened to several of them and you know that you like them. If you look on the right hand side of the page, you'll see a little heart that's grayed out. You click that and it makes it dark and all of that customer's file files will go on the favorites uh, list. And then anytime that they're in the find work queue, they will show up in favorites. Additionally, when you go to submit a file, if you choose five stars because you really like the file, it will pop up and ask you, do you want to add this customer to favorites? And I believe in transcription, if you get a five-star customer rating from the customer themselves, that email will also include a, would you like to add this uh, customer to favorites? And you can click that from there. Is that correct, Trixie? That's correct. Nope. Okay, we but we don't have that. In, in captioning, we do get the five-star customer emails, but we don't have that option to add them to favorites from that email. So in captioning, it's, that's the only two ways to add to favorites. Uh, here's another question from Mandy about, can we talk about the process for Lend an Ear or will that be a future session? Uh, I can probably grab that one quickly. Uh, Mandy, we will have a future session to kind of talk more about Lend an Ear. But in the meanwhile, if you're in the Linded Ear section of the forums, there's a pinned post at the top uh, that does talk a little bit about best practices for Linden Ear and a couple tips to be more successful there. So before we have another session to do Linden Ear, uh, take a moment to look at that pinned post at the top of the forums for Linden Ear for either transcription or captioning, uh, depending on which, uh, which of those job types you do most often. Uh, it'll give you a pretty good idea about how to get started there, but we will have another panel to talk more about it. Um, could we elaborate about transcription quality indicator when choosing a file? So we talk about like the, the audio quality. Can uh, we elaborate a little bit more about how that can be better understood? Uh, I can try. <laughs> I don't really understand how it's assigned because it, I don't know if it's an algorithm. I doubt somebody's, some human being is actually listening to each one and assigning the numbers. So I suspect uh, it's automated. It's just a guideline. It's not, it's not completely precise. There are times, and also what happens is, I think the biggest problem is probably the system checks, spot checks the file, and they'll only hear certain parts of it. I'm sure they're not listening to the whole thing and assign the rating on that. And so what happens is you may start out with terrible audio and then it gets better, or you may start out with great audio and then interference occurs. So it's not a 100% it's not a uh, foolproof guideline, but it does, I think it probably interacts with the pricing. So it's more for Rev to figure out, okay, this is crappy audio, so here's, we're gonna price it somewhere in this range, or this is somewhat better audio and it's gonna be priced. But I don't think it's, I don't think you should be relying on that 100%. That's why you have that one hour unclaimed window. You should spot check every part of the file and make sure that some random speaker hasn't shown up later on, you, you know, with uh, uh, some crazy accent that you don't understand or that the, someone's put their phone in their pocket and taken a walk down uh, to the lake to go fishing and you can't understand a word they're saying. So you really need to check yourself personally, every part of the file before you decide to keep it. Uh, so Eric asks, uh, is there a time of day, if you're trying to be a rookie to find the best files, file length, et cetera, what time of the day would you recommend that Eric would be uh, going through the find work queue? Avoid the weekends. Work slows down on the weekends, that's for sure. And Monday morning is usually pretty slow. For me, I find, um, I, don't know what your, I don't know what your time of day is because we're, we are people from all over the world. So my time of day may be different than your time of day, but I'm in the central time zone. And I find that anywhere from nine o'clock my time uh, to well into the night, I'm, I'm seeing good files. I will say that after about midnight in the central time zone, I'm seeing more European files, more Australian files, more UK files. 
Whereas in the day, uh, I'm seeing more American accents. So it really depends on where you're located. But if you can figure out, if you have a little time zone clock, um, it's kind of logical that if it's during the day in Australia, you're probably going to get more Australian accents. Or, or if it's during the day, you know, California is going to come a little later. The business files from New York will come earlier. Other than that, I can't really that, I can't. say much other than the weekends are slow. So don't feel like, don't get discouraged by that. It's just that people aren't working on the weekends. Most people submit their files during the week. There are, there is some, you know, overflow, but for the most part, stick to the Monday through Friday and the business, your business hours and your, wherever you are locally uh, situated and you should be fine. I don't know if we'll have time for this one. Uh, there was an answer where someone said, could you explain more about how to use text expanders? We've got about four minutes left. Uh, uh, maybe that's a future panel or maybe that's yeah. something else we can do. I don't know if in the four minutes here, we're gonna be able to get to uh, a full how to use text expanders. It's really complicated. Uh, there is a, um, I would say, I, I, I'm gonna get into it and we're gonna use up all of our time. So I would say that we, I think we should do another one. If enough people want that, uh, ask, you know, request it and we'll see if we can put one together for you. I would love to do that. Uh, lots of questions about advice for things like headphones. Uh, any thoughts on best headphones or things to maybe make a uh, rev easier outside of the rev platform? I use earbuds. Um, uh, Melanie, you can talk after me, but I use earbuds. I see you have earbuds in too, Melanie. <laughs> Actually not today, I, no. Oh, and Rye has, um, Rye has uh, probably noise canceling ones. Right. So uh, it depends on your environment. Um, I, noise canceling is better if you have ambient noise outside of your, you know, in the environment that you're in that we really need to block it out. I would say it's more important to make sure you're in a distraction free zone. Don't be trying to transcribe on caption with the TV blaring, uh, you know, dogs barking, kids running. I mean, I know you can't always control it, but try to create your work environment so it's distraction free. My earbuds cost $10 on Amazon. I mean, I'm not, I don't have any special, but what I do have that you might want to consider is there are uh, audio boosters for Mac and for PC. There are various audio boosters that are free that you can do use that really help uh, clarify some of the audio. And again, that's, um, there's all different uh, ones of them, but uh, if you go to the forum and you, and you research audio boost, you'll see there's tons of threads on it. Lots of different recommendations. And I personally use over the ear headphones myself. Uh, the ones that I got that I use all the time, uh, they're normally $25. I got them half price on Amazon a couple of years ago and they're really good. Uh, a lot of people like to use gaming headsets. Um, basically just, you know, kind of try some things out, borrow something from somebody who has better phones and just see if, what, what you like. Um, and I wear glasses, but uh, yeah, I don't have any problem with the over ear, over the ear headphones. Uh, but you know, you, you do have to try different ones out. 